Canada, and uh, perhaps you could focus in a little bit on Saskatchewan as well and Regina, uh, an attractive place for FDI in agri-food. I think one of the uh, you know the biggest advantages uh, uh, Canada has, and and certainly uh, the Regina area, Regina Plains, is um, you know the the massive amount of acreage that exists for uh, crop production in Canada. I mean, it's uh, Saskatchewan has about forty percent of the farmland in Canada, and uh, you know Regina is located sort of in the southern belt of that, which is a major producing area where most of the the grain is grown. Uh, so it has that access to supply, which is important to, um, you know, providing um, uh, not only commodities, which it does today to a very large degree around the world, but uh, increasingly moving towards, uh, you know, food ingredients. So um, uh, plant proteins, for example, is the one that we're heavily focused on at Protein Industries Canada. And, uh, you know, the Canadian um, uh, prairies produces uh, you know, 60 million tons of grain a year, uh, probably about 14 million of that uh, metric tons are plant proteins, but they're locked in the seed and we don't extract that. We ship it out as raw commodity. So as, as food processors look for, um, you know, jurisdictions where they can get access to large volumes of very high quality supply, uh, getting close to the acreage production in places like Regina or Western Canada generally, is very important to them and that's one of the big advantages uh, that um, you know we're seeing from foreign companies that need access to that supply i, th I think it's also um, likely to un sort of a, a mixed bag of uh, fortunate and unfortunate benefit from uh, climate change so you know as we see uh, the effects of climate change you know the, i think the general view is that we'll see more pressure on the northern hemisphere regions to produce more of the food and, uh, you know, there are three big growing areas in the Northern Hemisphere, one of which is Western Canada. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for uh, a jurisdiction to invest in where you have uh, potentially access to large quantities of supply coming from farms that are very sophisticated, using the latest technologies, uh, you know, it's a very attractive place to invest for the Canadian regulatory environment, um, you know, the financial environment here, uh, access to skilled workers. A whole range of things in addition to the acreage. So I think all of those things combined make it a compelling case. And we've seen some international companies like Roquette already investing, for example, in Portage. Uh, you have AGT Foods here, which is, of course, a, a Canadian uh, headquartered company, but has operations all over the world and is doing more expansion of its work in Canada um, and, and in the Regina area. Could you give us a sense for the initial? objectives of the protein industry supercluster and why plant-based protein was chosen as the priority focus? Over the years, what's happened is um, with environmental pressures and those kinds of things and some of the changes in consumer uh, choice, uh, you know, uh, consumers have started to recognize that, you know, if we're going to get more, continue to get a lot of protein from, uh, from animal sources, so the dairy, meat, uh, poultry, aquaculture, kind of, uh, which are still the dominant sources and will continue to be for protein um, uh, supply for for human diets. Uh, you know, with a with a changing climate and pressure on water and climate and, and acreage to grow food, two billion more people on the planet, we're going to have to get more of our protein delivered from plants directly as opposed to routing it through an animal because of it. You know, it takes eight pounds of protein to produce one pound of beef protein. So the efficiency would be to put, you know, that one pound of protein into human uh, food directly rather than routing it through uh, livestock. Could you talk a little bit about innovation and where you see the best opportunities for Canada uh, to add value? Yeah, I think on the innovation side, you know, we've taken the view at uh, Protein Industries Canada that we have to take a full supply chain orientation to it. So it starts with seed or germplasm, uh, which has certain characteristics to it. So some of our uh, uh, innovation uh, programs or projects, rather, are really focusing on how do you develop a seed that has the traits and characteristics that are ultimately going to be looked for by the consumer or the processor down down the supply chain. Uh, so that's you know kind of one key piece of of our focus and. You know, that, that's an area where the University of Saskatchewan has, um, for example, is one of the leading research institutes in the world on plant science, particularly as it relates to crops grown in Western Canada. So 
So, you know, there's an example of where, you know, we can start with, with the seed germplasm itself. And as an example of that, we're investing in, you know, uh, with a global company, Corteva, uh, and, and local Canadian companies, uh, you know, a new variety of canola that will increase the amount of protein in the canola uh, through plant breeding. And uh, it will make that protein easier to extract from the seed through, for processing. So that, that starts, you know, creating a product in terms of the seed itself that is, is, is kind of uh, uh, bred and engineered to be used better by consumers in terms of delivering more protein and making that protein easier for processors to extract. You know, the next leg in the supply chain is the farm. And and so uh, what we have is an advantage in Canada and Western Canada in particular, but generally in Canada is, you know, a farming community that is very quick to adopt and and uh, and adapt to new technologies uh, to grow that. And there, and there are, you know, really exciting advances going on in agriculture, particularly AI robotics uh, applications related to um, you know, to, to planting and, and crop maintenance and that sort of thing. So as an example, on, um, on uh, August 20th, we announced a $26 million investment into a consortium led by Precision AI, which is a, a drone uh, robotics, um, artificial intelligence enabled system for providing, uh, applying crop uh, pesticide and crop nutrients. And so, you know, today a farmer's implement will go down a field with a large spray boom and it'll put uh, pesticide everywhere. So it'll kill the weed. Sometimes the crop is immune to that pesticide, but there is residue on it. Um, and in this case of drones, the, the drone intelligence AI enabled is smart enough to recognize, it, is it a seed or a plant that we're, we're trying to harvest or is it a weed that we want to get rid of? And it'll put a micro dot of poison on the weed and leave no residue on the on the plant that we desire to harvest. Um, uh, you avoid all of that big cost of the big equipment that's required to put that out there. You reduce the amount of uh, crop nutrient and and uh, and and uh, crop protection product that you need to put on the, on the field. So it reduces the the total load of that. It puts it precisely where it's needed to get the plant to grow. Or the or the the, uh, the 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 weeds that the plant is in competition with away. What are some of the policies or investment supports from both the federal and the provincial governments that are encouraging companies to invest in Saskatchewan uh, and Regina's agri-food sector? And what more do you think we can do or should continue doing in the coming years uh, to remain competitive? The challenge for Canada is that we leave a lot of value on the table. So if I take a crop like canola, for example, which you know sells for uh, you know, as raw seed, you know, roughly $530, $40 Canadian. The market goes up and down, obviously, but that's the whole seed price. And so I just sell that to, you know, a buyer in China or the U.S. or Europe or something like that. Um, you know, that that will get me 500 and some dollars a ton. On the other hand, if I take the conventional approach today, which is to crush that canola, separate the oil and the meal, I get about $900 a ton for the oil and $300 a, a ton or thereabouts for the meal. So I've taken that from $500 now to $1,200. Now, if I start to extract the protein out of that plant, it's about 20% of the seed, that's worth $1,800 a ton. So you can see as you fractionate the seed into more component parts and you integrate that into the food supply system, how the value is captured much more in Canada. And so that's really our mission is to make sure that we're maximizing the value from the crops that we grow today. You know, we've been successful at attracting interest from companies because they see, you know, a strong focus on innovation as a result of the supercluster. So that, you know, as the as the world changes, particularly around all these trends I talked about, increasingly Canada is seen as as a leader in innovation. We know they know we have good scientists, they know, they know that. You can execute projects here well. They know that the government is supporting it through uh, co-funding the innovation, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of good discipline around uh, intellectual property protection and all that kind of thing so that we don't see the the benefits of our innovation sort of leak out of the country, but they're captured here for increasing more employment and jobs. Um, uh, so, so that you know, that's one of the roles of the super cluster. But, the, you know, the provinces individually have their own uh, initiatives that they can also offer. So, for example, in Saskatchewan's case, 
if you build a new processing facility, it's uh, it's usually eligible for a 15% tax credit on your capital costs. So if you're investing $100 million in a plant, 15 million of it is really coming back in tax savings right away as a result of that, which you can carry forward. Um, you know, and then there's other programs to assist in training, uh, uh, infrastructure around utilities, those kinds of things that are obviously important to building processing facilities. Um, you know, the other things that I think we see uh, increasingly important uh, because part of our mandate is not only to fund innovation, but it's also to develop an ecosystem of collaboration amongst all the various partners, whether they're purely in one of those four buckets that I mentioned, uh, you know, germplasm production, farming, processing or marketing um, is um, there's a whole, uh, you know, a community around that, like uh, finance infrastructure, legal infrastructure for IP management, um, educational institutions for training skilled workers, those kinds of things. And so that whole ecosystem has to come together. And that's very much part of our mission as well, is to help create that ecosystem. What do you recommend to uh, foreign investors who are looking at the agri-food industry in Regina or Saskatchewan? Are there specific pockets of the industry that you think hold the most promise? Yeah, I think there's sort of two broad pockets, I would say, of investment opportunity that are quite unique. One is the area that I talked about earlier, which is the robotics AI initiative. So, you know, in Regina, for example, I'll just give you two quick examples. One is the one I mentioned, the precision AI that's using the drone technology to apply crop nutrients and crop protection. Another one is called Dot Technologies, which was recently acquired by uh, Raven from uh, the U.S. And it's a completely robotic farm implement system. So uh, that unit is a power unit. It hooks to various um, implements and it requires no operator on board. Basically, it it goes out to the field from the farmer's yard and it does its work and then it returns when it's done uh, completely uh, autonomously. Um, so, you know, those are examples in, in the space of what I'd call software AI robotics that would be of interest to venture firms uh, because you, you have companies here doing that and you have a farming community that's ready and willing to eager to adopt that sort of stuff and prove it up. So if you want to scale up that kind of production for selling that machinery or that software around the world, it's a great environment to do it in. So that's one bucket. It tends to benefit, I think, um, asset managers or investors who are looking for smaller size, uh, writing smaller size checks um, and um, uh, are focused on innovation and technology that's you know going to be leverageable all around the world. Um, the second bucket would be the processing stuff that I've talked about. That's much bigger capital. So that tends to be bigger firms and partner with SMEs that have developed these new technologies. So, you know, a good example would be a company called Botanico. And I think you probably interviewed Dave Didziak from Botanico, but you know, they've really developed a very unique process for separating oil in complete bodies, uh, rather than crushing it and blending it. And so, you know, their products in terms of protein extraction from oil seeds or oil bodies from extraction of oil seeds uh, provides huge advantages that are uh, heretofore uh, just, you know, not widely used in the in the food industry, but are game changers in terms of improving margin for uh, food processors and providing healthier products. So today, for example, if you buy a Beyond Meat burger and a Possible burger, you're probably going to get palm oil or something like that as the fat replacement for animal fats in that it's it's highly saturated. Whereas if you take a canola product that has more omega-3 in it and that kind of thing, you get a healthier oil drop into that plant protein enabled uh, meat product. And so, you know, these kinds of things will uh, improve the, 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 the new plant-based products that are out there uh, and uh, with a healthier choice. The challenge for Canada is it's got to move beyond commodity production. We've We've mastered that game and it's got its limits now. I mean, we've hit the margins that we can hit, and it's only we're only going to become more profitable by increasing scale. And that's why you see fewer farmers with bigger farms, as an example. Um, but there's a huge amount of value to be captured by processing more of that product here and selling a high quality ingredient. So for Canada, it's going to mean um, I think governments are going to get um, um, they're going to have to get their heads around how they can provide incentives for these global companies to get here. Uh, and there's going to be competition between the communities for locating those facilities. Um, but there's no question that Canada's got a very unique uh, set of um, 
of, uh, of offers to make to, to global enterprises that are interested in, in the new world of food production and feed production around, uh, uh, to supply you know, 2 billion more people and existing customers with better food.